He looked down to study her. She was sleeping well, her hand open and relaxed on the pillow. He knew sometimes she dreamed badly. But tonight, her mind was quiet. Trusting it would remain so, he slipped out of bed to begin. Eve woke to the fragrance of coffee, genuine, rich coffee ground from beans cultivated on Rourke's plantation in South America. The luxury of that was, Eve could admit, one of the first things she'd grown accustomed to, indeed come to depend on when it came to staying at Rourke's. Her lips were curved before her eyes opened. Christ, heaven couldn't be better than this. I'm glad you think so. Her eyes might have still been bleary, but she managed to focus on him. He was fully dressed in one of the dark suits that made him look both capable and dangerous. In the sitting area below the raised platform where the bed stood, he seemed to be enjoying breakfast and his quick daily scan of the day's news on his monitor. The gray cat she'd named Galahad lay like a fat slug on the arm of the chair and studied Rourke's plate with bi-colored, avaricious eyes. What time is it? she demanded, and the bedside clock murmured the answer, 0600. Jesus, how long have you been up? A while. You didn't say when you had to be in. She ran her hands over her face, up through her hair. I've got a couple hours. A slow starter, she crawled out of bed and looked groggily around for something to wear. Rourke watched her a moment. It was always a pleasure to watch Eve in the morning, when she was naked and glassy-eyed. He gestured toward the robe the bedroom droid had picked up from the floor and hung neatly over the foot of the bed. Eve groped into it, too sleepy yet to be baffled by the feel of silk against her skin. Rourke poured her a cup of coffee and waited while she settled into the chair across from him and savored it. The cat, thinking his luck might change, thudded onto her lap with enough weight to make her grunt. You slept well. Yeah. She drew the coffee in like breath, winced only a little as Galahad circled her lap and kneaded her thighs with his needle claws. I feel close to human again. Hungry? She grunted again. Eve already knew his kitchen was staffed with artists. She took a swan-shaped pastry from the silver tray and downed it in three enthusiastic bites. When she reached for the coffee pot herself, her eyes were fully open and clear. Feeling generous, she broke off a swan's head and gave it to Galahad. It's always a pleasure watching you wake up, he commented. But sometimes I wonder if you want me only for my coffee. Well, she grinned at him and sipped again. I really like the food, too. And the sex isn't bad. You seem to tolerate it fairly well last night. I have to be in Australia today. I may not make it back until tomorrow or the day after. Oh, I'd like you to stay here while I'm gone. We've been through that. I don't feel comfortable. Perhaps you would if you'd consider it your home as well as mine. Eve. He laid a hand on hers before she could speak. When are you going to accept what I feel for you? Look, I'm just more comfortable in my own place when you're away. And I've got a lot of work right now. You didn't answer the question he murmured. Never mind. I'll let you know when I'll be back. His voice was clipped now, cool, and he turned the monitor toward her. Speaking of your work, you might like to see what the media is saying. Eve read the first headline with a kind of weary resignation. Mouth grim, she scanned from paper to paper. The banners were all similar enough. Renowned New York prosecutor murdered, police baffled. There were images, of course, of Cicely Towers. Inside courtrooms, outside courthouses. Images of her children, comments and quotes. Eve snarled a bit at her own image and the caption that labeled her the top homicide investigator in the city. I'm going to get grief on that, she muttered. There was more, naturally. Several papers had printed a brief rundown of the case she'd closed the previous winter, involving a prominent U.S. senator and three dead whores. As expected, her relationship with Rourke was mentioned in every edition. What the hell does it matter who I am or who I'm with? You've leaped into the public arena, Lieutenant. Your name now sells media chips. I'm a cop, not a socialite. 
Fuming, she swiveled to the elaborate grillwork along the far wall. Open viewing screen, she ordered. Channel 75. The grill slid open, revealing the screen. The sound of the early broadcast filled the room. Eve's eyes narrowed, her teeth clenched. There's that fang-toothed, dickless weasel. Amused, Rourke sipped his coffee and watched C.J. Morse give his six o'clock report. He was well aware that Eve's disdain for the media had grown into a full-fledged disgust over the last couple of months. A disgust that stemmed from the simple fact that she now had to deal with them at every turn of her professional and personal life. Even without that, he didn't think he could blame her for despising Morse. And so, a great career has been cut off cruelly, violently. A woman of conviction, dedication, and integrity has been murdered on the streets of this great city, left there to bleed in the rain. Cicely Towers will not be forgotten, but will be remembered as a woman who fought for justice in a world where we struggle for it. Even death can't dim her legacy. But will her killer be brought to the justice she lived her entire life upholding? The Police and Security Department of New York as yet offers no hope. Primary investigating officer Lieutenant Eve Dallas, a jewel of the department, is unable to answer that question. Eve all but growled when her image filled the screen. Morse's voice continued. When reached by Link, Lieutenant Dallas refused to comment on the murder and the progress of the investigation. No denial was issued as to the speculation that a cover-up is in progress. Why, that smarmy-faced bastard! He never asked about a cover-up! What cover-up? The slap of her hand on the arm of the chair made Galahad leap away to safer ground. I've barely had the case for thirty hours! Shh, Rourke said mildly, and left her to spring up and stalk the room. The long list of prominent names that are linked with Prosecutor Towers, among them Commander Whitney, Dallas's superior. The commander recently refused the offer of the position as chief of police and security, a long-standing, intimate friend of the victim. That's it! Furious, Eve slapped the screen off manually. I'm going to slice that worm into pieces. Where the hell is Nadine first? If we've got to have a reporter sniffing up our ass, at least she's got a mind. I believe she's on penal station Omega, a story on prison reform. You might consider a press conference, Eve. The simplest way to deal with this kind of heat is to toss a well-chosen log on the fire. Fuck that.